پاکستان to take on Netherlands. They're a complete side, of course, they want to dominate. They've been enjoying uh, white ball cricket as well, but Netherlands have got some problems of their own with some of their players leaving for the 100. They've brought in some players as well, including the experienced Wesley, who's been uh, given a comeback after a long time. But Pakistan will look to dominate as they've enjoyed some great form in the white ball cricket format as well. After that, of course, we'll be moving on to some more cricket. The Kashmir Premier League action continues. In Muzaffarabad, rain has affected the day yesterday, but uh, today so far we've got an eight overs match between Overseas Warriors and Jammu Jambaz is underway. Overseas Warriors were batting and all the action is live right now on PTV Sports. You can catch all the action there. If you talk about games that took place yesterday, Ravel, uh, Ravla Court Hawks beat Jammu Jambaz in the opener while Shajid Khan was absolutely superb. And Muzaffarabad had beaten Bach Stallions in a rain hit competition because rain affected play there as well. Then, of course, we'll be moving on where the President of Pakistan has conferred Pakistan Civil Awards. Babar Azam has been bestowed with Sitara Imtiaz. Bisma Maruf has also received Tamga Imtiaz. Ashad and Nu have been conferred for the Pride of Performance Awards for their stellar performance as well. Jangir Khan has been given the Nishana Imtiaz Award. And, of course, uh, we'll be talking about all these awards that have been given, including Sirbaz Khan. Uh, of course, it's a great moment uh, for their families, for the players themselves, for the nation. And of course, uh, very prestigious awards these are that are given every year on the 14th of August. And the President of Pakistan has announced them and has conferred these awards on these uh, athletes, players and people belonging from all walks of life as well. So we will definitely be taking a look at uh, that as well. And then we'll move on to tennis uh, in the final segment. The Cincinnati Masters, Emma Raducanu is set to face Serena Williams. Nadal has paid tribute to Serena on uh, return and of course Ken Nadal become the world number one again will be in question. That is the entire lineup that we're discussing today of course in detail uh, and uh, before we move on we'll go towards a short break but we will be right back with the details. Stay tuned. Right, welcome back. And now things in detail with Pakistan's tour to the Netherlands, the first one international taking place tomorrow to discuss this further. We've been joined by senior sports journalist Sayyid Heather. Assalamu alaikum, Heather. Bhai, how are you, sir? Walaikum salam, Ahmed. I'm fine. How are you? Alhamdulillah, very well. Right, sir, the series begins tomorrow now. And uh, like we said, that Pakistan should be dominating. But uh, of course, Netherlands has had a great journey so far, ever since the time they used to be an associate nation. Then one of the first teams to participate in ICC events. And so far, the recent cricket that they've played uh, has been good enough. Yeah, exactly. Netherlands is not a bad team. And in non-playing test nations, uh, I think Netherlands is the best team. And now Pakistan is going to play against Netherlands before the Asia Cup. So it's uh, not very important, but uh, something is important because Pakistan have to manage uh, their batting side middle order because Pakistan are always facing the middle order problems. So they are in Netherlands, they can manage their middle order batting again and provide some batting practice. Uh, then uh, before the first match against India, they will be in good form. And if you think uh, uh, Netherlands will be a weaker side, weaker opponent, then I think you're wrong. Uh, because Netherlands have uh, given a hard time to New Zealand in T20 uh, matches. And also they have played well against England. Even they have lost all the matches. But still, Netherlands is a good opponent. And Pakistan, Pakistan team has to show some good performance also against Netherlands. Well, Heather, by Pakistan's biggest competition is always against Pakistan themselves. And we've had problems in the longer format of 50 overs cricket. What are the areas where you would want to see Pakistan improve their one-day cricket? Yeah, very clear that the middle order batting. They are facing the problem only in the middle order batting because the top order is performing very well. Babar Azam, uh, Rizwan and Fakhar Zaman, they are in good form. They are good uh, in their batting order. 
and bowling is uh, very well. Shahin Shah Afridi is not playing the series, but uh, other bowlers like Haris Rauf and Shadab Khan and uh, Shanawaz Thani, they are the major bowlers of the Pakistan team, or uh, Wasim, Mohammed Wasim. So Pakistan bowling is uh, very strong, bad top order batting is, but middle order they have to control that uh, because in uh, in the series uh, they have not added any specialist batsmen. They are relying only the top order, three or, or two openers and uh, one down Fakhar Zaman, and then they are using the all rounders, all the Shadab Khan or Mohammad Nawaz or other uh, all rounders. So uh, Pakistan have to think about that, how they can pre prepare for the Asia Cup for the, before the first uh, match against India, and then uh, onward to T20 World Cup, uh, how they can prepare their middle order uh, in this series. This, that will be the question. How important is the run rate formula over here? Because I think I agree that we've got a big problem in the middle order, but what has happened that if Pakistan lose early wickets in a 50 over game, we either have a collapse or our run rate is not enough because we've struggled with the last 10 overs due to the lack of that power hitter on number 6 or number 7. So now that being said, even if we try to uh, reshuffle the middle order, how important is it to play cricket according to the modern standards of a higher run rate? Yeah, exactly. Pakistan, Pakistan is not uh, playing like the other teams like England or uh, Australia, they will. They think about always to, to play a fearless game. And Pakistan, when whenever Pakistan lo, uh, lost two early wickets, two, three wickets, then they go into the defensive mode. This is the major problem of Pakistan team. They think to save the wickets and to get the runs in the last over depth overs. This is not good strategy. Modern, modern day cricket is that uh, whenever you are on the wicket, you have to get runs. You should not wait for the depth overs or for a, for the overs for a face there you can use the uh, uh, bowlers uh, you have to take on the bowlers as soon as possible as early as possible you have to go and uh, do the runs this is the m most important thing and pakistan's uh, management um, the ba uh, batting uh, coach is mohammad yusuf so he was in his era he was a good uh, batsman excellent uh, he, batting technique he knows so he has to prepare the batsman to use the every ball don't think about that to you to wait you should go and uh, and play every bad delivery for the runs for the runs if you will play for the runs you will get if you will play for wait to get the runs then you cannot get a good uh, score rate but we have a similar problem in the middle overs as far as our bowling is concerned. I was discussing this on another platform that in the past we had our spinners who mainly dominated and mainly it was Saeed Ajmal who was producing those good overs in the middle overs and taking wickets and controlling the run rate. Uh, right now in the recent times we've seen Pakistan struggling in those middle overs with their bowling, not picking enough wickets, the run rate has been leaked and of course we have an added problem of not having a depth bowler for the last uh, six to eight overs or probably five to six overs and that's where we are leaking about almost 80 to 100 runs in the last 10 12 overs how do we solve that occasion now the captain's got a lot of confidence on Shadab Khan Mohammad Nawaz to become those prime bowlers for our middle overs um, uh, against the Netherlands I think they don't have any problem because uh, Shadab Khan and um, Mohammad Nawaz they are uh, good bowlers against Netherlands, as uh, um, as we see that uh, the Netherlands batting is not so strong like the other toss play, uh, test playing nations. But um, we have to think about the further matches. We we should not think about the uh, this series, Netherlands series, because it's is uh, easy series for Pakistan team, and they they can overcome easily. Uh, Shadab Khan is uh, uh, strong uh, for the Netherlands batsmen. I think uh, they will be uh, they will having some problems against Shadab Khan. They will have problems against uh, Mohammad Nawaz. Even the against fast balls, they will have problem. But we have to think about uh, the further tournaments, Asia Cup and T20 World Cup. Pakistan has a good time right now to prepare themselves for the for the matches and uh, think about in the middle overs why we are not getting in in the uh, near past if we see 
uh, we were fail in the middle overs to get the wicket and this was the point where the other teams they have got uh, uh, strength and they have got bigger score against Pakistan so Pakistan to manage Pakistan's captain Babar Azam and the management Saklan Mushtaq they have to make a strategy how they can get to the uh, wickets in the middle over wickets will be very important thing in all the matches where you have to, you have to uh, stop the run rate that's very important i think wickets is the key where pakistan try to but heather bhai obviously against uh, opposition like netherlands pakistan should come with full force there should be no ifs and buts no collapses nothing like that there should be a proper cricketing side going against netherlands um, um, I think Ahmed. Uh, now this question is uh, uh, it's not necessary how the Pakistan should go because Pakistan already selected the team and Pakistan have selected all the big players. Pakistan mm -hmm. have not given the chance to young players. I think I was in favor to give the uh, give chances to young players like so Shakil or other uh, players. They are sitting in Pakistan. They should be selected. So Shakil was visiting with the Pakistan to England and other countries and now at this moment against Netherlands he has been dropped mm -hmm. so this is the question why why you are going with the your m major players you can you, you can give the rest to a major players like uh, Rizwan or Fakhar Saman and you can get uh, young players like if you see the Indian team they are visiting also Zimbabwe and uh, they have given rest to Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma and Rishabh Pant they are resting and other players young players they are going uh, they are going there so, so the pakistan could go uh, could do also same thing but pakistan has not opted young players and now pakistan with the strong players there in netherlands so now if you are with the strong players in netherlands so okay go with the strong side and uh, play against netherlands and uh, get the batting practice this is a simple uh, simple answer of this question Definitely, that should be the case and that's how things should proceed and of obviously the first one day begins tomorrow. It's a three-match one international series. We want to see Pakistan dominating but obviously as Heather Bhai has also mentioned that Netherlands is of course a quality side and uh, if you want to see their overall performance in the recent uh, couple of series they've had, they've played quality cricket but uh, 50 over cricket is a different ball game. It's going to require a lot of experience, a lot of talent, a complete game. But hopefully, Pakistan gets to dominate and perform well as well. Heather Bhai, thank you very much for joining us on Shukri Sports Shukri Ahmed, Extra. thank you very All much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure having you. Right, of course, we'll move on to some more stuff as well on Sports Extra. But right after this short break, stay tuned. Welcome back to Sports Extra. We'll be discussing the Kashmir Premier League second edition now. Of course, a match is underway between Overseas Warriors and Jammu Jambaz. Overseas Warriors has set a target of 102 runs in eight overs. The game has been reduced to eight overs considering the weather conditions and everything that has been happening there as well. To discuss this further, uh, we've been joined online by cricket coach and a cricket expert and somebody who's also part of a KPL franchise this season as a coach as well, Sayyid Mohammad Awais. Assalamu alaikum, Awais. How are you? Technical problems. We'll try to get Awais back online with us as well. As I just mentioned, Overseas Warriors has set a target of 102 runs for Jammu Jambaz to win this match. The action right now is live. On your screens at PTV Sports HD in high definition, Sharjil Khan is on the crease. Eight overs, 102 runs required. The game cannot get any exciting than this. And straight away, we see that he's been smashed for a four Suhail Khan through the mid-wicket region. Sharjil has been in stellar form in the first game as well. Avas has joined us once again. Avas, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? How are you? I'm very well. Avas, what would you like to tell us? Uh, we've got a very action-packed eight overs game underway. But so far, it's been a decent start to the KPL. Of course, the weather is something we're worried about. Uh, it has been. I mean, it, it, uh, if you just watch out Kashmir Premier League, it's one of the interesting leagues, I would say, right now. Because, I mean, uh, the rain has been playing cats and dogs over here. And it has not been easy for, uh, for the teams uh, specifically to, I would say, uh, to go with a full-fledged uh, playing uh, playing for information. Because, I mean, it, it, it's a rain-interrupted game. I mean, right now, if you just watch out Jammu versus... Uh, the other team overseas war. It's it's one of the cracker games where Jammu has to win this because Jammu unfortunately they lost the previous match against uh, Ravalokot Hawks and if they lose this match, it would be I would say it would be really tough for them to be back in the tournament. Wes, overall, uh, what does the weather prediction say? And of course, what are the contingency plans? Because even in yesterday's game, I thought the ground staff did an excellent job. The covers were there; they were as quick as they could be. And uh, as far as the infrastructure is concerned, you have to 
uh, really uh, send a lot of uh, you know appreciation for the ground staff involved. I mean, I mean, I've seen the ground staff over here. They they literally every day around morning four o'clock they are present at the ground. I mean, doing all the preparations and all that. Uh, today, because it's again 72, 73 percent rain predicted over here in Muzaffarabad. It was raining heavily in the morning. So even I thought that the uh, the match won't be able to play up because this match. But uh, whatever, like you mentioned, on the ground staff has been fabulous. They have tried the level best even to get at least eight to nine overs of 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 game over here because the people in Muzaffarabad have been anxiously waiting for Kashmir Premier. I've seen people over here the way they have been watching the games I mean from the rooftop of their houses because it's one of the beautiful stadiums I would say uh, surrounded by the uh, by the Muzaffarabad Valley it's, it's in between it and it's one of the beautiful stadiums around the world and uh, I know the overs are not being able to get uh, 20 over games over here but uh, whatever you have seen right now it's one of the jam pack I would say and a, and, and a good high I would say a tough match is going on. Wes, what about uh, your franchise? How are things proceeding, training and the whole squad uh, atmosphere right now? It looks good, I mean, because, you know, we are the defending champions and uh, obviously we, we would fight our level best to retain the title and our team is looking fabulously good. Mohammed Amir Bhai or Ahmed Shahzad Bhai, Ahmed Bhai has been leading the squad well, I would say. And the previous match, I know it was interrupted because of rain, but we one thing was good that every batsman, uh, specifically the opening batsman, Bismillah Khan, and uh, the other ones, they had them uh, the execution plan that what we need to, we knew that it's going to rain and what uh, what the Chris Lewis method says. So we we are going through a planning situation over here and it looks good because the first match what we won against uh, Jammu Jambas has given a boost because if you just watch out this season, uh, the biggest rivalry I would say I know it's Ravala Court versus Muzaffarabad, but uh, looking at the Jammu squad, it's one of the best squads of of Kashmir Premier League and it wasn't an easy match but Alhamdulillah we won it and uh, we have a match tomorrow again it's going to be a cracker game tomorrow and uh, inshallah we'll try a level best to win it definitely yes uh, I know it's too early to call but so far this is the third game now in progress uh, how's the wicket played so far I would say the wicket is a uh, little bit different from the, I would say, last year because it was uh, easy to bat, I mean, on this wicket. But due to, I mean, you know, the weather situation over here, there's dampness in the wicket and it's not uh, much, I would say, easy for the batsman to bat. Like if it's a first match, obviously it takes time to you to settle on. But if you just read the wicket, uh, spend a little bit time over there, one or two overs, it's easy for you to bat. I mean, if you just watch it right now, Shajil Khan, the way he has been scoring runs, I mean, because everyone knows in the previous match against us, he scored a brilliant 50 plus odd runs over here. Now he's again back into the party. I guess 23 runs, no, no, uh, no wicket down. So he's one of the batsmen who can make an impact in this. In this, I would say, Kashmir Premier League. And secondly, you know, all these guys who are actually out of the Pakistan circle, they know that if we perform in the Kashmir Premier League, it would be a gateway back for for us to for to be appearing for the World Cup. Definitely, Wes. Thank you very much for joining us. All the best to you and your franchise, the Ravla Court Hawks as well, and hope to see you soon. Right, that was Sayyid Mohammed Wes talking to us regarding the KPL. The stellar game is underway, where, of course, uh, target in eight overs is 102 against overseas Warriors. Jammu Jambaz batting is underway. It's an exciting, uh, action-packed, high-intensity game, and you can watch all the action on PTV Sports HD. Now, the President of Pakistan has conferred awards on various athletes and sports personalities and people from all walks of life. We've got a report on that. Let's take a look. Pakistan men's cricket team captain Babar Azam, Commonwealth Games gold medalist Arshad Nadeem and women's team skipper Bisma Maruf were conferred civil awards by President Dr. Arif Alvi on the country's 75th anniversary. Babar was bestowed with Sitara Imtiaz while Bisma received Tamga Imtiaz. Javelin thrower Arshad Nadeem and weightlifter Nudas Tagi but were conferred President Award for pride of performance in recognition of their remarkable feat and winning gold in the recently concluded Commonwealth Games. Mountaineer Sirbaz Khan, who recently became Pakistan's first climber to summit 12 peaks over 8,000 meters, received President's Award for Pride of Performance. Chaudhary Shafi Hussain and Shafiq Ahmed Jishli were two Kabaddi players awarded President's Civil Award. Essen Ramzan, Masood Jan, Amna Wali, Abdul Karim, Irfan Mehsood, and Ms. Shahida were other athletes awarded with the Pride of Performance. In a message, President Alvi said that the government of Pakistan is determined to preserve and promote traditional and cultural sports in our youth, which has also been reflected in the new national sports policy. 
policy, especially focusing upon this important element of sports. Right, there you go. Uh, all you need to know about these awards that has been, uh, have been conferred by the President of Pakistan, different sports personalities and different people from all walks of life, each and every one of them. And to their families, we send out congratulations. And of course, uh, I think a great moment, a proud moment for them and the families and the nation as well. And obviously, uh, more success coming their way. On that note, we'll go towards a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Extra. We'll be discussing tennis and the Cincinnati Masters and all that is happening in the world of tennis. A lot of updates and to discuss them further, we've been joined in studios by tennis player and fellow anchor as well, Mehak Khokar. Assalamu alaikum, Mehak. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, I'm good. Thank Great you. to have you on the show. Now, Mehak, I think the biggest one is, because we didn't have a chance to talk to you, is about Serena Williams. We had all been speculating, when is this going to happen? What's going to be the future? But finally... She's called it. Yep. Um, you know, I, I would say that it's the end of an era, the end of a legacy. Uh, she's such a great champion. And I wouldn't say just in terms of tennis, mm -hmm. but I would say she's one of the greatest athletes of all time, for sure. And uh, we weren't hoping for this day to come. You know, we've all been dreading it. We knew it may be close, but I thought that maybe she'll still be able to play for a few more years, mm -hmm. as we're all hoping for Federer, you know, to do the same. But I guess um, this day had to come someday. So let's just enjoy, you know, her her queenly presence in the court <laughs> for you know the last few times that we can. I think mm -hmm. we're all going to be really cherishing these last few moments, and I, I'm sure a lot of people all over the world, whether they're a fan of hers or not, will be watching her play till that very last ball that she does play competitively. Because I don't think we're ever going to see such a great sportswoman again probably in a very long time. We talked about yeah. this, that we've had champions every now and then, but to play with that consistency, and I personally think especially after coming back from maternity leave and coming yes. back to competitive tennis was another ball game. I mean, you know, they say you need to be different in order to create a difference, and I think she is the perfect example of that. Um, you know, even from, you know, you hear about her story, you watch their movie, mm -hmm. um, King Richard, the background that she they came from, you know, how they had to play in um, Compton, which is known to be not a very good area, and, you know, they would hear gunshots, but they would just continue practicing, and she was always living in the shadow of Venus, but she came out even better than Venus at the end of it. Then, you know, she was pregnant while playing Australian Open. She won it. Uh, she comes back after being a mother, and she's she's still at like you know she's still making finals of Grand Slams. She's still winning, and uh, you know just the way her entire career has been has just been absolutely sensational. She's an inspiration for so many people, not just in the tennis world and not just in the sporting world, but even generally. Um, the example that she set out for the generations to come is definitely something that everybody wants to look up to. Uh, so I would say that you know her presence will definitely be missed, but she's left a legacy. And it's something that I think many people are going to continue to learn from. As a player, you all dread that time when you've got to call yeah, it. But definitely. then again, as a player, I think you know your limitations. And Serena clearly figured out that it's not going to be, you know, another easy ride going forward. Definitely. I think, uh, although I do think that a lot of the players um, from the last decade <coughs> have proven mm -hmm. that, you know, 30s are the new 20s and 40s are the new 30s because we know that earlier the retirement age would be mm -hmm. in the late 20s. Players would retire, that would be it, that would be your career. But now it's different because players are retiring at 40, right? So it, it's crazy because um, I think the age to play tennis competitively has been extended, which is great for us tennis players. Um, and I myself personally do believe that age is just a number. It's about how you feel physically and if you can maintain it then you should keep playing regardless of your age it's about how you feel physically and mentally and all that stuff regardless of your age and I think they had a great example of that um, yes it is abs your life changes completely you know something that you have been doing since you were a kid mm -hmm. because we know that whenever you play tennis you learn it from a very young age and it's something that is a part of you it will remain a part of you whether you're competing or not so when you do something repetitively and repeatedly so many times over so many years, it becomes a part of you. And when you have to leave it, it can be 
um, completely different for you mentally, physically, you know, it's, it's, it's a I mean, it's huge change. It's not about change. people getting better than you, it's about your own body telling you that, look, I can't sustain this um, anymore. Yeah, I would say that, but also sometimes, you know, the, the willpower sometimes can end because you know that, okay, you know, I'm not saying that her willpower ended, mm. I'm sure she had the motivation to make it 24 or to go beyond that. But like she said, she said, you know, I have to prioritize things in life yeah. now because maintaining, um, a family and you know I'm sure she has that guilt in her even when she was playing after she was a mother that maybe she wasn't able to give her child you know enough time um, because she was training mm -hmm. when you're training you have to do it all the time so I think she wants to kind of prioritize between the two and that's the reason she is leaving that's what she said I don't mm -hmm. think it's so much because her body's given up and she can't play anymore but she said you know if I had to choose between tennis or anything else I would choose tennis but she's like when it comes to family and tennis then I would choose the latter yeah, obviously, obviously that comes first so I think that's one of the reasons that she's, she's up against Emma Raducanu now so it's oh, gonna I be was, interesting I was really actually you know it's really funny because uh, just two days before I saw that this match was going to happen, mm. I don't know why randomly before going to sleep, I had a thought in my mind. Even though she hasn't competed against mm. many of the youngsters coming up who play tremendously nowadays, but uh, you know, I don't know why out of nowhere I got in my mind, oh, you know what, Emma Raducanu and Serena Williams have never played each other, so I really hope that you know they have a match against each other. First I was thinking maybe US Open first round, but then I thought, no, there's a few tournaments before that, so hopefully maybe they'll play each other in those tournaments. And then two days later, I saw that they were up against each other. So I'm like, okay, well, my wish came true. My wish was granted. Um, if you ask me about the result of the match, um, you know, the match still has to happen. But to be honest, Emmett, um, as much as I love them both, and I think what both have achieved is tremendous. I mean, of course, but what Serena's achieved is just on another level. But even Emma's win was like no other in the US Open. Uh, because of the way she did it. Mm -hmm. um, however, I don't see Emma's game being at the same level as it was when she did win the US Open. I have match I have watched a few of her previous matches. I don't see the same power. I don't see the same confidence in her strokes. Um, I don't see, I mean, of course, she's, she's still got a great attitude. She's young. She's got a lot of time to come ahead to win, you know, to improve on her game. But with her coaches constantly changing, her fighting her coach that made her win the US Open, um, and her thinking that she can manage, you know, winning on her own at such a young age. Uh, you know, I'm such a huge fan of her personality and her humbleness that she does bring along her achievements and her success. But at the same time, I do see that her game is not the same at the moment. And we know that confidence plays a huge role in tennis. And I confidently, I don't think she, I don't think her confidence is at the same level. She had nothing to lose when she came into that US Open and she, the way she played, you yeah. could tell. Um, I don't know if it's mentally for her or what, but I just don't see the same kind of power in her strokes, especially on her forehand. She's not dictating points the mm -hmm. way she was in the US Open now, you know, from the matches that I watched of hers, she gives most of the balls to her opponent. They land short or they land, you know, straight to the opponent mm -hmm. so it's easy for her opponents to just make her move. Her I don't think her movement is the same, you know, in Wimbledon when we watched her last year and then US Open, I thought her movement was tremendous. She would get to some really great ungettable balls and be able to change defense into offense, you know, tremendously. But I don't see that same thing um, in her game now. And then Serena, on the other hand, we know she's not at her best. Of course, she's barely played any matches. Her fitness level isn't the way it used to be, you know, that we've seen Serena play. Of course, maybe power is still there. But of course, fitness plays a huge, huge role in tennis. I'm sure mentally, Serena is very strong, very, very strong. But for me, I personally do think that Serena will still win because of the way Emma's yeah, uh, The, the bigger question now on the men's side is, can Nadal become number one again? He's also paid tribute to Serena Williams as well himself. Mm -hmm, yes, but then again, this is a very important tournament for his future. Uh, definitely. Um, you talk about the US Open? Yeah. Or the, yeah, US yeah. Open. Um, well, I mean, we do know that you know, it was very unfortunate what happened in Wimbledon. Uh, he had to pull out of the semi-final mm. because of his injury. But I think... You know, Nadal just keeps improving himself again and again. Like, he keeps proving something new to his fans. He doesn't have anything to prove to us, <laughs> but then he proves something else new to us, um, you know, which which is just tremendous. I mean, that match that he played um, in the quarterfinal, I mean, he was... 
his he had an injury through it like throughout most of the match mm -hmm. and he fought till the very end he did not retire and he won against Taylor Fritz who I think is playing some exceptional tennis at the moment and he beat him in five sets with that injury I mean his fighting power is and his resilience is just like no other athletes that I have seen in any sport and I think that's one of the reasons why he is one of the greatest tennis players of all time he has the most grand slams at the moment mm -hmm. uh, and I think even though you know he's saying that he's still recovering but we do know what happens when Nadal takes extra time to recover and then comes into a Grand Slam I think that is key you know I think one thing that is very underplayed um, and is not given enough uh, I would say attention is recovery right whether you're an athlete or not an athlete even if you're just generally you know into fitness and going to the gym and working out recovery is just as important as the input and the productivity that you put in mm. because if your muscles are not going to recover or you don't get adequate sleep or you know the right amount of nutrition and of course you don't take enough rest um, then the next day if you're not fresh you cannot give a hundred percent on the court and I think that's what's very very important for Nadal because we know that in every ball and in every point he gives 110 yeah, percent I would say I would say 110 not even 100 percent he gives 110 percent so and we know he's got that style of play where he's like grinding it out you know and he goes for every ball so I think uh, you know for every player and him recovery is vital it's very important so I think uh, if his body does stay fit doesn't get down on him he doesn't mm -hmm. have any injuries coming up because we know that happens with him a lot yep. I think he could definitely come and you know come back to his number one spot <laughs> definitely good we make thank you yeah. very much for joining us on thank Sports you, you it's a pleasure me. having thank you me. that wraps it up uh, join us tomorrow once again from me and the entire team it's goodbye for now